Now we're going to talk about construction techniques and supplies. First thing are glues. This is yellow glue. It's a very good glue for building model rockets. It's much better than white glue. We usually use yellow glue for attaching wood parts to paper or cardboard parts. Another type of glue are epoxies. Epoxies come in two parts. You have to mix equal amounts of each part together to form the glue. It's very important to use equal amounts of each part. The types of glues are 5 minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, and 1 hour setting glues. We recommend that you use 15 minute or 30 minute setting glues. Another type of glues are instant glues. Instant glues come with two basic types. One is very fast setting glue. The glue sets in about 5 or 10 seconds. And the second sets is gap filling, and it sets in about a minute or so. You have to be very careful when you work with these glues as you can glue your fingers together, glue your fingers to your rocket, and also the fumes can be irritating to your eyes. So be very careful when you work with these glues. This is plastic cement. Plastic cement's good for gluing plastic parts on rockets, but you wouldn't use it for gluing the wood parts of your rockets together. Types of glues to avoid are hot glue and model airplane cement. They just don't make good glue for building rockets. Now we're going to talk about cutting a fin out of balsa wood. In order to do that, you need a hobby knife. Here's an exacto knife that we're going to be using today. It's a very sharp knife. Be very careful when you use it to keep your fingers out of the way. We have a fin pattern. And on the fin pattern, there's a leading edge. And the leading edge needs to be parallel with the balsa wood grain. And the balsa wood grain runs the length up and down the balsa wood. So we put the pattern down on the balsa wood, and we're going to trace the pattern out. And I've already traced this here to save a little bit of time. And then we're going to use a metal ruler to cut out the fin. Again, be very careful to keep your fingers out of the way, because an X-Acto knife is very sharp. There's no need to cut through the first time through, and when you're done, you have a fin. And it's a good idea to use sandpaper to sand the root edge so it's smooth and fits on your rocket properly. You also have a sanding block to sand the various edges other than the root edge of your fin. Next thing is your body tube. And let's say you want to cut your body tube because it's too long or you want to cut a piece out. The way to do that is to wrap a piece of paper around the tube use a pen or marker to make a mark. Again, I've done this to save a little bit of time. And use a stage coupler to reinforce the tube so you don't crush the tube when you cut it. And then very carefully, it's going to take a number of passes, cut your tube. And when you're done, you'll have the piece of tube comes off. And again, to smooth the tube out, you like this in the sandpaper. Another way of cutting the tube is by using a razor saw. This is a hobby razor saw here. Make a mark, just like you did before, and then start cutting away very carefully to try to stay along the mark. Now, once you're done with your tube, it's time to get ready to put your fins on. And we have to mark where the fins go. Typically, fins are three or four fin arrangements. We have a commercial body tube marking device, which is very nice, gives a little pattern. And I'm just going to quickly mark here where the fins go. And then I'm going to use an angle iron, with different types of angle irons, to make the mark. One, two, three. And like I said before, there's different types. Here's a smaller type, same idea. It's a nice straight line on the tube, and this is where you would glue your fin. Okay, let's move on to the recovery system for the rocket. And this is your shock cord. It's made out of elastic, and it's attached to the rocket by a shock cord anchor. And the shock cord anchor is built very easy, very easy to build. Put glue on it, fold it, some more glue. 
fold it again. And once that's done, you need to insert it in the body tube. You want to make sure that you put it in deep enough so it does not interfere with the shoulder of your nose cone. Let's say this is an inch long. You want to make sure that we insert this with glue more than an inch down. Now let's talk about recovery devices. Let's talk about parachutes. It's a commercial model rocket parachute. It's already been cut out. It has shroud lines that I've attached, two shroud lines. I want to attach the next set. And I'm using here uh, called button and carpet thread. It's very strong. And you want to use thread that's strong. And I'm going to use a yardstick just to measure out how long my shroud line is going to be. And I'm going to use uh, foil tape, this is holiday tape, and attach that shroud lines to the parachute. And we're all done because I did some of the work ahead of time. And there's our parachute. See? Very good. Now, you can make your own parachute. And something you can use as far as material is concerned is a piece of garbage bag. And you have to cut out the plastic a particular way. You can make your own pattern using a protractor and a ruler. This is a 20-inch parachute pattern. Or you can make your own pattern by taking a square piece of paper and folding it diagonally three times. One, two, and finally my third time of folding it. Make sure I get a good fold here. Good fold. And then I'm going to measure the short side, see how long it is. It's uh, six inches. And then I'm going to measure the long side, and it's six inches here. And I'm going to mark it. And I'm going to draw a line between the corner and my mark. Then using a pair of scissors, I'm going to cut along the line. And now I have my pattern for an eight-sided parachute. And I use that pattern to cut out the parachute. And this is what the parachute looks like when it's all cut out. Now I have to attach shroud lines to it. And perhaps the plastic is not as strong as I would like it to be, or perhaps my payload section is heavy, and I want to reinforce the parachute. So what I do is I arrange the shock cords, excuse me, the shroud lines, so they go over the top of the parachute. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I have a knot in the middle. And again, I'm going to use my foil tape to attach the shroud lines. I'm just going to do this for one set of lines. And I think that I'll get, give you the general idea of how it works. Foil tape at the end, foil tape about a third of the way up. And that shows you the reinforcing. And that's how we make our own parachute.